Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to look at a problem from our favorite problem suggester, who is sometimes known as the integral suggester. So what are we going to do here? Well, let's set capital A equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of dx over the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth and capital B equal to the integral from zero to one of dx over the square root of one plus x to the fourth. And what we'll do, well, we won't find the value of either of these integrals, but what we will do is find the ratio of their values. And this has like a nice result. Okay, so let's just start with our capital A and we'll see if we can work all the way to something involving capital B without stopping. Okay, so here we have the integral of dx over, well, it's gonna be the square root of one minus x to the fourth, but I'll take that one minus x to the fourth and I'll factor it as one minus x squared times one plus x squared. But now this one plus x squared motivates us to do a tangent substitution or this one minus x squared motivates us to do a sine substitution. So we're gonna choose one of those and for the purposes of this video, we'll choose the tangent substitution. But I think it'd probably be a nice game to choose the sine substitution and see what happens. Maybe post in the comments if you try that. Okay, so let's maybe set x equal to tangent of theta, like I said, so that makes dx equal to secant squared of theta, d theta. That's the derivative of tangent. But then one plus x squared is also equal to secant squared by trigonometric identities. We know one plus tangent is equal to secant. Okay, then maybe what about the bounds of integration here? Well, when x is equal to zero, we'll see that theta is also equal to zero the tangent of zero is zero. And then when x is equal to one, well, theta is equal to pi over four. And that's because the tangent of pi over four is one. Okay, so those are all of the parts of our first substitution. Okay, so let's put those in here and see what we have. So now this will be the integral from zero to pi over four. In the numerator, we have secant squared theta d theta. And then in the denominator, well, we have the square root of, well, one minus x squared, that's one minus tangent squared. But I'm gonna write tangent as sine over cosine. So we have one minus sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And that's just for the purposes of an upcoming step. And then we know one plus x squared is secant squared, but that's within a radical. So if I take it out of the radical, it just simply becomes secant theta. Okay, so we've got something like that. But now we can do a bit of simplification. Notice that this secant will cancel this secant squared down to just a secant in the numerator. But then what I'd like to do is flip that over to the denominator. But if I flip this secant theta into the denominator, it becomes a cosine theta. And that's because cosine is one over secant or secant is one over cosine. Those are the definitions here. Okay, but now what I'll do is I'll bring this cosine theta inside of the square root. But in order to do that, I need to square it. So that's going to leave me with my next integral, which is the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Now I simply have d theta in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have the square root of cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, nice. So just to reiterate, that last step we got from pulling this inside of the radical. But now we can use a trig identity. So in fact, cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine two theta. So let's write that down. So this is equal to the integral from zero to pi quarters of d theta over cosine two theta, and that is within a radical. But now let's get rid of that two theta, and we can do that with a substitution. And so what we will do is let u equal to two theta. 
So that means that d theta is equal to one half du. Okay, so that's what happens with the d theta component. And then when theta is equal to zero, well, it's pretty clear that u is equal to zero. And when theta is equal to pi over four, well, that's pretty clear that u is equal to pi halves. So that's gonna change us to the integral, or one half times the integral from zero to pi over two of du over the square root of the cosine of u. So I think that's a little bit simpler. Okay, nice. And now from here what we'll do is change this integral that has something to do with cosine into an integral that has something to do with sine. So how might we do that? Well, we're gonna make another substitution. And let's see, maybe I'll fit that substitution into this blue box right here. So I'm gonna set t equal to pi halves minus u, but that's the same thing as saying that u is equal to pi halves minus t, or du is equal to negative dt. Okay, great. So let's see what we get from that. So that's gonna give us a minus one half, the integral from, well notice when u is equal to zero, t is equal to pi over two, so I have a pi over two there. When u is equal to pi over two, t is equal to zero. And then I have dt over the square root of cosine of pi over two minus t. But that's simply equal to sine by some trig identities. So I can write this as the sine of t. And then maybe before we move to the next step, we're gonna do this switcheroo. We'll take this minus sign and apply it to changing the order of integration. Okay, so let's start the next board with that. Hey there, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. While watching my videos is a great place to start, you get more out of learning by doing, and that's why I highly recommend you sharpen your skills with Brilliant. Brilliant's enormous library of learning content allows active learners, like you, to explore a variety of topics and skill levels, and Brilliant will support you every step of the way. You will be able to master whole topics gradually in as little as 15 minutes per day and learn anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, or computer. Brilliant makes learning more like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. I recently started doing one of their bonus math puzzles each day to keep myself sharp. Give it a try and see how much fun it is. No matter what skill level you're at, Brilliant can help you improve. But we're scientists here, so don't take my word for it. You should test it for yourself. Treat yourself to a unique hands-on experience by going to brilliant.org slash michaelpenn for a 30-day free trial, and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So far, we've shown that a is equal to half the integral from zero to pi over two of dt over the square root of sine t. Now we're gonna continue from there. So we're gonna start with a fairly simple substitution. And that simple substitution is t equals two times theta. Note that that means that dt is equal to two d theta. And then let's see, when t is equal to zero, that means that theta is equal to zero. And then when t is equal to pi over two, that means that theta is equal to pi over four. So I think that's pretty clear how that substitution is working. So we will pick up a two because dt is equal to two d theta, but notice that's gonna get canceled here with this one half. So in the end, we'll have the integral from zero to pi over four of d theta over the square root of sine of two theta. So it might seem silly to do that, but in fact, what we're doing is kind of working our way out of a hole that we've created back towards this integral involving b. So if you recall, in order to get into this hole, we used a trigonometric identity for the, well, it was the double angle formula for cosine, and now we're gonna use the double angle formula for sine. And that's gonna give us our next step. So that'll give us zero to pi over four as our integral, and then we'll have d theta over the square root of two times 
sine theta times cosine theta. So like I said, we're using the double angle formula. Okay, and now let's take this two out and that'll leave us with a one over root two in the denominator and I'm just gonna recopy my integral. And then I'm gonna write this thing right here in a really fancy way. I'm gonna write this as secant squared theta d theta over the square root of tangent theta times secant theta. And I'll let you like do this elementary check that those two are the same. All it involves is really just the definition of um, tangent and secant in terms of sine and cosine. Now I'll apply a trig identity to secant theta. We know that secant squared is one plus tangent squared. That means secant is the square root of one plus tangent squared. So let's bring that over here. We have this is one over radical two, the integral from zero to pi over four, and then we have this secant squared theta d theta in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of tangent theta times the square root of one plus tangent squared theta. Okay, great. And now we can finish this whole thing off with one remaining substitution. And this is a bit of a tricky substitution, but like I said, it will finish everything off. Let's take x to be equal to the square root of the tangent of theta. Notice that means that x squared is equal to tangent of theta. And actually that means that x to the fourth is equal to tangent squared of theta. And that's really the motivation here because that means this one plus tangent squared will be one plus x to the fourth, which is what we have here. Okay, but let's see what we get here. Let's take the derivative of this equation, leaving us with two x dx equals secant squared theta d theta, which in turn tells us that what? Two dx equals secant squared theta d theta over, well over x, but x is equal to the square root of tangent of theta. Okay, nice. So just to reiterate, let's maybe circle these two things right here and observe that they're exactly equal to two dx via this calculation that we've done up here. Now, all that's left is to find the bounds of integration. So when theta is equal to zero, that tells us that x is equal to zero. And when theta is equal to pi over four, that tells us that x is equal to one. And then, like I said before, this tangent squared theta is just x to the fourth by our calculation up there. So putting this all together, we have two over the square root of two and then the integral from zero to one of dx over the square root of one plus x to the fourth. But that integral that's left over is exactly our b integral. So that leaves us with the square root of two times b. Well, two over the square root of two is simply the square root of two. So let's see what we have. We have a is equal to the square root of two times b. So that means that we can fill in our value of a over b simply as the square root of two. So in a sense, we just showed that the square root of two was a ratio of two things but it's not a ratio of two integers. It doesn't make it a rational number, but it is a ratio of these two nice integrals. So that's something, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.